This video is an introduction to drilling methods and the purposes for which drilling is conducted. Drilling is a widespread and important tool in the mineral exploration and mining industries. Primarily, the purpose of a drilling program is to collect samples for geological investigation and geochemical analysis from below the surface, where rocks and minerals are otherwise inaccessible. Drilling also allows for three-dimensional visualization of the subsurface, which is important for making decisions during exploration and mining. Subsurface samples, which are recovered through exploration drilling, are used to delineate geological conditions beneath the surface, to verify ideas developed during target generation, to locate mineralization, and define it in economic terms. It's also used to create maps and geological models of ore bodies and to verify that the ore that is expected in a deposit is actually present. During mineral exploration, there are three main reasons to undertake drilling programs. Discovery of new ore bodies, expansion of existing resources and reserves, and to close up drill hole spacing. Discovery drilling is the process of drilling early stage or grassroots properties to test for potential new discoveries. Discovery drilling follows on from surface techniques such as mapping, prospecting, and soil sampling, as well as geophysical techniques which have de delineated an anomaly. Good drilling results may generate stock market interest, which is particularly important to junior mining companies whose existence depends on investment. Expansion drilling follows discovery drilling, and tests for expansion of mineralization along strike and down dip of the known mineralization. Good results during an expansion program indicate that the deposit is increasing in size or grade or both. Infill drilling is used to better define a known mineral deposit by closing up the spacing between existing drill holes. Usually infill drilling is a precursor to feasibility studies, and while it is technically important, particularly for ensuring that technical reports comply with National Instrument 43101 regulations for disclosure, good results do not often generate much in the way of investor interest. Other reasons to drill include for geotechnical purposes, such as designing open pit or underground mines, for environmental monitoring during various phases of the mining life cycle, or for grade control to ensure the material is being directed to the correct location. There are three major exploration drilling methods that we are going to explore today. Core drilling, using a diamond drill, reverse circulation drilling, and rotary air blast drilling. Diamond drilling, or core drilling, obtains an intact cylindrical rock sample by cutting the rock using a diamond impregnated drill bit on the end of a set of drill rods rotating at about 1000 RPM. The sample is pushed up into the core barrel, which is inside the rods, and is then retrieved using a wireline and overshot. The advantages of diamond drilling are that you retrieve a solid core sample which provides excellent information on geology and structure. The sample can be located very accurately, and a diamond drill is capable of drilling holes several kilometers deep. Diamond drills can also be quite small and light, making them suitable for remote exploration in Canada, where the only access is by helicopter. Diamond drilling is, however, expensive and slow, and it provides a relatively small sample relative to the sampling area. One of its major drawbacks is that diamond drilling requires water to lubricate the bit, to stop it overheating, and to clear cuttings away from the bit. In Canada, this is challenging for two reasons. Water can be extremely scarce, particularly in mountainous areas. It's common to source water from up to two kilometers from the drill which necessitates a lot of water line and several pumps, as well as a dedicated person to ensure adequate water supply 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The other problem is climate. Water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, which means it must be heated almost year round when drilling in the north. Reverse circulation drilling is an air rotary method whereby chip samples are collected from the bottom of the hole using a face sampling hammer. RC drills utilize a slowly rotating double walled rod and a heavy steel hammer. High pressure air is pumped down the rods between the outer wall and the inner tube. The air passes out over the bit and is sucked back up the inner tube along with the broken fragments of rock that have been crushed by the hammer. The chips are passed through a cyclone where the entire sample interval is homogenized 
then dumped into a bag where they are sampled by the geologist and technician. RC drilling is fast and cost effective. Whereas a diamond drill could reasonably be expected to drill 30 to 50 meters in a shift, a 100 meter shift is an exceptional day, it is possible to drill up to 300 meters in a single shift with reverse circulation. RC drills collect a much larger sample due to the much larger diameter drill hole, and because the chips are homogenized in the cyclone before collection, there is no sampling bias. There are, however, several disadvantages to RC drilling. The rigs and rods are typically large and very heavy, which limits access. Often an RC drill rig is a three-piece ensemble, with a rod truck and a compressor in addition to the drill itself. The method requires high-pressure air, which is a safety hazard, and there are regulatory issues in some jurisdictions with dust. There are also problems drilling through aquifers, and because the samples are chips, it is impossible to evaluate structure. Rotary air blast, or RAB drilling, is another chip method that is used for shallow geochemical testing. Samples are collected using a hammer or a blade from shallow, unconsolidated superficial materials. RAB drilling does not penetrate fresh rock. It is an inexpensive and fast drilling method with a small environmental footprint due to the small size of the drill rig. Lower air pressures mean reduced safety hazards. The primary disadvantage of RAB drilling is sample contamination. Unlike RC, RAB drills use a single wall rod so samples return to the surface in the annular space between the rods and the rock, resulting in contamination as the sample passes up the hole. The other disadvantage is that the sample is relatively small compared to the sample area. In Canada, the primary exploration drilling methods are diamond and RAB. Diamond drilling is expensive, however a lot of information can be obtained from drill core and small drills can be transported by helicopter to remote locations. RAB drilling is increasing in popularity for reconnaissance geochemistry, especially for niche consultancies in the Yukon and Northwest Territories. RC drilling is not well utilized in Canada. Access is extremely challenging to the large heavy drills, and the lack of structural and geological information in chips compared to drill core largely negates the lower per meter cost of drilling. <laughs>